My bed was made this morning, but it appears we have a cat on it. What, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome to today's video, which is a room tour. I've been meaning to do this for absolutely ages. What we're gonna be doing today though, we're gonna have some daytime clips and some nighttime, just because some of the geckos tanks, they get a lot of glare on the window, so I'll be filming them later. But for now, let's start here. So this is an old vivarium that I've kind of turned into a desk and to store things in underneath. On top we have a harvester ant colony, which obviously this doesn't have a queen, so they are slowly dying out. But to be fair, they're doing fairly well still. I didn't think they'd last this long. Bad thing about filming in the day, you may hear traffic in the background. I apologise for that. Here we have my dino flagellates. You may remember the dino pets. They're still going. They're still going. I don't think the company is anymore, which is a shame. Uh, you can still see dino flagellates in the wild, but I still have some, which is pretty cool. Over here we have a Fetonia. I just noticed on one of these leaves here, I don't know if you can see, but it's like half white half pink and you know that you can get like hot pink ones so it's like really odd <laughs> anyway i also have a wandering dew plant so this started out as just one stem i took from the tank and now it's a whole bush uh basically all you do is every time they get longer you just chop a bit off put it back in the soil and it just makes a bush and we have a succulent here which i just found loads of webbing over and i just found this in it i just found some kind of pupa in my succulent I don't know what that is, it's probably a moth baby. So in here, we actually have my giant isopod colony, and I took this bit of zebra tree, because the actual plant was dying, and I dumped it in here thinking they're gonna decompose of it. It's actually somehow growing. I don't know how. This particular species of isopod I have found to be very, very secretive. Like, look at this one just burying itself so you really don't see them as often but they are really really cool as we work our way around the room we shall now go to Diego's tank so here he is so Diego's vivarium actually lives next to my TV and I get quite a few questions from people saying they want to get a leopard gecko it may go in their room it may go next to the TV is that okay now I would say on average I might watch an hour of TV in my room before bed. Hi Diego! So it really doesn't bother him, like obviously there are some days I'll watch it for longer and stuff and it's never super loud but it just has never bothered him, he'll sleep right through it. Don't you Diego? So if you are worried about that, and it is also a small TV, it's not anything big. Um, I think it'd be more of a concern if the gecko was next to like a big TV in the living room which is used a lot. But um, yeah, this looks weird. <laughs> it's like it's just his head and his tail. So yeah, anyway, so this is his tank. It is sort of naturalistic. If you haven't seen it already, um, I have a video on how I built it. Obviously, the calcium pot's knocked over. Honestly, this gecko, I swear, as soon as you give him calcium, he will knock it over. I'll replace that. Naughty. Naughty Diego. Yes, yes you are. Why are you so cute? <laughs> Whilst we work our way around the room, here is the plaque, the 100,000 subscriber plaque, and it's right near my National Geographic calendar, but yes, I am very, very proud of that. Next we have this, that looks like a dusty set of drawers. This isn't actually dust though, this is supplements. You know, if you have reptiles, you know that stuff gets everywhere, so I should clean it, but it almost like stains it. But this is basically, this entire four tier thing is just for my geckos. I have this notebook that I stuck my stickers to, which I note down anytime I feed them. We have the bag of supplements. This top drawer is for leopard geckos, the second drawer is for crested geckos, and we have like spares, but yeah, this is all for the geckos. Out here, this is where I keep all my feeder insects and breeding colonies. So we have like uh, Mario worm beetles who are, we're trying to breed. We have darkling beetles. We have baby mealworms, Mario worms, 
all of that sort of stuff and also crickets now of course whenever you have feeder insects they do smell a bit that's why I didn't want them in my room so I have them just out here obviously if you take out old food regularly you like replace that you clean them out when they need to it can reduce the smell with the crickets in particular I've been using wood shavings lately and it has reduced the smell quite a bit and I feel like the crickets last a lot longer but um, yeah Next we have Drogo's tank and as you can see he is joining us on his perch. Now when we look down here, his tank's a bit of a mess. It's kind of like some things are growing, some aren't. So all of a sudden the golden pothos is starting to grow really well. I put in new petonias, some are doing well. In both tanks these light green ones are being demolished by wood lice. You may see in some of these tanks there will be these little pots left around. So basically if they don't eat their food, if there's quite a bit left, I'll just leave it to the cleanup crew. And what I've found is it will sometimes make a little humid spot so you can sometimes get quite a few... Oh, they've really cleaned that for me. <laughs> you get quite a few springtails in these. So I basically leave them in there till they're clean and then yeah, take them out. Or if they're not getting cleaned up, I'll just take them out. If you ever see this, as I explained in my feeding video, that is powder. Are you over there now? See if that'll light up. You can kind of see him. My camera's starting to adjust. Anyway, then down here is Gizmo's tank. Now Gizmo is the last tank I need to do. As you can see, she still has Eco Earth. She has dug all her Eco Earth off her heat mat. Um, but yeah, I, I need to do it. Basically, when you're working in this room, it can, it can get really, really hot. So I'm waiting until it's cooler. But she can, she's gonna come out. Come on, Giz. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm waiting until it's cooler so I can actually do her room. Come on out. No, she is hiding. Just quickly show you guys. Here she is. There's a probe on there that reads the temperature. There's also a thermostat probe on there. But yeah, I desperately want to do this tank. Then we have this tub, which has my tropical grey and orange wood lice in. Okay. Now on my birthday, I found all of these things down the side of the tank. And when you look close, they look like spider eggs right but they're underground but they're in like this sort of like fuzzy webbing stuff however i've been reassured that it's actually a type of fungus i think i don't i couldn't get like a positive id on it but if anyone knows exactly what this is please let me know in the comment section below but looking inside of here it looks as though it's spreading so i don't know if this is bad for the wood lice or whether they eat it they seem to be sort of currently eating this just got a little plastic disposable fork like it's so weird sometimes when you get like mold and stuff you can just sort of uh, like a bit of fluff when you first do a natural tank you'll always get a bit of fluff on something when everything's trying to settle and normally once you mix it around it just dies off and you got wood lice and stuff they will eat it but with this stuff I just don't know. I don't know what on earth it is. Anyway, back to the rest of the room tour. <laughs> then we have Lyra's. Um, so, earlier today I actually filmed a bit in here and basically the lock for this Exoterra tank is just gone. It doesn't click. You have to properly like, open it, but um, it just doesn't feel secure. So I got a bit of a bamboo skewer and just shoved it between the two places where you can lock the door. And it seems to be working. But yeah, Lyra is just here. Let's see what she's gonna... Lyra has got out of her tank. Lyra, what are you doing? Oh god, she's so cute. Why are you so cute, Lyra? So yeah, this is Lyra's tank. She's gonna go hide in the background. But one plant that's done really well is the Golden Pothos. No surprise, this thing has taken over the whole top section of her tank, but it means her coconut is nice and sheltered. Um, but yeah. Oh, by the way, this thing, I've said in a few other videos, is completely destroyed by the wood lice. Like, the plant was already dead, but they've really gone to town on it. Whilst you are so kind to watch my video, I thought I'd let you in on an exclusive. Now, these are just my earrings. Ignore these. I am slightly obsessed with earrings, and this isn't even all of them. But what I do want to show you, if you've seen on a live stream, you may be lucky enough to see it on there. But this is a Leopard Gecko Talk necklace, and I've worked really hard to make these. I'm hoping they come out very soon. 
Um, they won't be sold on Teespring because I'm literally the one dispatching them. So if you're in the UK, the postage will be really cheap. Um, so keep an eye out on my YouTube community tab because I'll probably put it on there and Instagram and Facebook. But yeah, I have those and key rings coming out at some point. But I'm very happy with it and I can't wait to share these with you. Down here we have spare driftwood and rocks and I have the shade dweller like fitting. I'm already using the light that goes with it but I'm waiting to put the fitting on Drogo's tank on the top of that because I think it would suit him very well. We have expanding foam. We also have Minnie's background that I need to put in. There's a lot of stuff here. I thought I'd show you where I keep the ants. This is Liz the black garden ant and uh, Olive the harvester ant. Ignore the books. <laughs> I have such a range of books. I think I counted. I have over a hundred animal books. Like these really old ones. I don't know if anyone was born in the 90s and raised on these kind of animal books. They used to come with the animal action magazine a lot of the time. I just don't throw away books. And down here <laughs> we have like we have fossils and stones and I just find this stuff interesting. I know some people might think it's kind of geeky but like whatever. And then um, I have this which is all the way from Mexico and I believe it's made from like the Wichu Weech tribe or something. It's all made from like beeswax and beads. It's really really cool. My best friend got it for me. And this is a Dia de los Muertos skull that I made. And yeah here's another fossil. Yeah. <laughs> Then over here, above the bookshelf, is Ziggy and Minnie, and they've come out to greet me today. Hi guys! So there is Minnie, and normally what I'll do is I'll open these both up, and they'll come out to get food or whatever, but I have a little seat here so I can sit down with them. You may have noticed in um, Minnie's tank, it is not how it used to look. It's her original background. Not the 3D one. And all of her rocks are kind of just piled on top of each other. And there's a big cork thing in front of this. You may have seen my feeding on my pets video. Uh, Minnie got behind the background. I had to rip it out that night. And I've just kind of put these in like this. They're all secure. But I found she really likes it. I guess it's kind of like how it would be in the wild where she could slot inside the rocks. The reason I put the big cork thing here is because I found she really doesn't like it when it's really light. So I've been trying to make it as dark as possible. But yeah, she's trying to escape right now. And then over here we have Ziggy. And this is her naturalistic tank. I really love her plants. I think they look so realistic. And they just slot inside the rocks really well. She's just going to retreat. As you can see, this is, so this is her main hide, but it has a secret like entrance exit in the back so yeah I the thing is sometimes these can look a little bit cluttered and obviously this is not done but I do really feel like there's so many different hiding places you can't see from just in videos that they can get around the tank and feel safe and secure so I'm really happy with that but yeah Ziggy's gone Minnie's still here <laughs> you're right Minnie yeah so this has been my Reptile Invert room tour. I really prefer Ziggy's tank. I will get that done, I swear. Oh my goodness, Lyra's over here. Hey Lyra. Um, I hope you can respect that I haven't put like every single part of my room in it because essentially it is my bedroom and I don't really feel comfortable putting my entire bedroom on the internet. But I hope you've enjoyed seeing the enclosures and sort of random things in my room. Before I go, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Repti Queen for sending in this photo of merch. And yeah, just thank you for buying. If anyone's interested, go over to my Teespring store. I will link it below. I also have a new pillow or cushion, whatever you'd like to call it, available to go check that out. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Maybe you've been watching for a while, you just never actually subscribed. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching, guys, and goodbye. What I'm